jokes aside, there is no secret sauce that will immediately turn a bad low end to a good low end. That being said, there are a couple of techniques that pass between producers and use to sweeten up the low end. This is a sacred technique I will say, although producers and audio engineers use it like a sacred cultural. Not because it's a sacred ritual that brings the demons to help you on your low end, but because it really works and sweetens up a low end of a track that is used on. To understand this technique, you have to really first understand two important things in low end. The first one is the dynamic range and loudness variation. Dynamic range is the ratio between the loudest and the quietest part of a musical piece. Dynamic range often actually evaluated in the macro scales, so you will hear things like a dynamic track or a more compressed track, meaning that a compressed track has less dynamic range overall, while the dynamic track has much more dynamic range overall. Loudness variation, on the other hand, is used in the micro scale. For example, a pet sound would have a really low dynamic variation, meaning that the sound levels are often same. While on the other hand, the percussion element will have very high dynamic variation, being that from bottom to the top level of the sound goes very fast. When it comes to the low end, especially below 200 Hz, we don't like high dynamic variation because it is the same effect of an explosion. It's irritating to the ear to hear. And smoother variation on the low end is more pleasant to hear because we have enough time to get used to the sound. And the second important thing is called low end separation. The low end separation is creating a loudness difference between very low end of your track, say below 150 hertz, and the mid low range of your track, say 150 to 400 hertz. This will emphasize the bottom low end of your track while push back the mid low end of your track, meaning that while we keep the loudness overall the same because we are boosting the low end while decreasing the loudness of mid low end, we will make it feel like people feel more bass than it is. The first thing that we are going to do is full tech EQ technique. When you take a look at the low end of the EQ, here you will see two buttons, the boost and the attenuation. Attenuation is basically cutting off and the boost is just boosting off. Both works as a shelf EQ. Let me show you with the noise. And if I boost the low end, for example, you will see a shelf applied to the low end. Very clear. And if I do an attenuation, you will see a shelf EQ applied other way around. But you immediately realize that the attenuation curve reaches much longer to the mid-range. And because of that, when you boost and attenuate at the same time, EQ acts as a low end separator. So what we are seeing here, actually, it boosts the things around 150, somewhere around here 180, and then cuts the between 200 to 400 hertz. In the manual of this EQ, actually, it is stated that don't boost and attenuate at the same time, but this is the, exactly how this EQ you use for many years. This separation help with this really smooth, warm, low end sound. And in this EQ, actually, you can decide where this attenuation or the separation will be happening depending on the frequency that you are picking. The sweet spot tends to be around 30 to 60 for electronic dance music. But this doesn't solve the, the first problem that we have talked, and it is the smoothness of your low end. And there comes our second tool to use, which is a compressor, especially a VCA compressor. What I have is this loop. It's not something horrible that we have to do out of work, but we can definitely sweeten this up. First, start with a simple VCA compression, meaning that we will try to compress the low end and try to make them close to each other. I know it is a bit hard to understand, that's why I, I will bring this uh, fab filter pro while I'm doing it so that you can see what it is doing, right? And the idea is you bring the threshold down and it will start compressing the stuff. And of course, you have to put a compression amount. So if it is zero, it won't, if it is one, it won't be doing anything. We will go something like a two, three. It doesn't need to be that aggressive. Take a look what happens to low end when I go more extreme. When you put this, for example, on your master chain, it will start decreasing the volume down on the low end first, so the, the lowest end part of the track. This is a really important point, and this is the reason VCA works really nice with this approach. Again, one more time.
I like to do the slower attack time. So let this initial kick transient pass through. And then depending on the track, in this case, we can try like medium release time. But I know a lot of people use like actually fast release, slow attack. There are also some people using actually slow attack, slow release as well. So it, it depends a little bit on the track that you are going for. So we will listen a bit closely with our ears. I want to damp down that low end because we will compensate that with pull tech EQ. Just like that. Again, you notice that we are grabbing down the loudness level all the way down, so we are less loud on the low end now. But here comes our the real, I will say the, the real secret thing that people don't talk too much. Rather than just voluming up the low end, we will actually separate the low end. We will keep the attenuation, so the mid range will be still quieter, but we will boost the super lows, making this smooth low end together with separated low end. Take a look what happens. Finally, what I'm going to do, push the utility a bit more so that we are in the similar range with and without so that we can do an A-B test. Try to spot the difference with your ear first. It's really important to train the ears and then you will actually clearly see on the prel as well what's really happening. So, without. So you can see in the FAB filters that when we are without, the difference between each sheets and the bass are much more than without. So what is what we are doing is that softening up this dynamic range between bass and the low and overall, and we are separating the super lows between the mid lows, creating this softer but still kind of louder low end. Other thing that I like to do is actually attenuating straight after that curve, like the first I will say it meets a bit more so that the bass has a bit more body. What I like to do is oftentimes go around here, test around between 4 to 8Ks. I'm going to start with 4K. If I can pull up that body of the bass a bit more. Do you see how this pull up the the body of the bass and pull down the those mid boomy part especially and then push up the super lows so that we have this really smooth warmer bass sound. This is really the definition of sweeping up the low end. But this is the, what I call the classic technique. There's also my own variation that I really like to use and I will show you that one as well. This is something that I tend to use on my own master chains. Plugins, of course, changes depending on what I'm looking for, but idea is still the same. So the first thing that we are doing now, instead of using the compression, we will use a saturation, meaning that we will warm even more up the low end. So it will additionally bring some harmonics to the sound. So I'm going to use a black box unlock design, but you can use any saturation plugin for this in this case. Let me bring down the output so that it's a bit more balanced. So what this does basically adds a little bit distortion to the sound, brings that meets a bit more, similar to the one we did with the pull tech. But this brings this sounds for me a bit warmer, a bit more authentic. That's why I like it. Instead of using VCA, I'm going for the FET 76. This is a bit more precise, but you can really go away with the VCA as well. I just like the color of the FET a bit more, so that's why we are going to use it, something like this. Again, we grab that low end. Now we are having less low end, I will say. And on top of that, we're going to go for 
pull tech again and do the same thing that we did earlier. And if you take a look at the fab filter, you will see the, again, same thing, things compressed together, smoothen up, again, without a mid. Okay, I, I work in Ableton, I don't have the pull tech EQs, I don't care about them. If you see my couple of previous uh, tutorials, you will see that actually I do the similar thing with the Ableton's own uh, plugins. The first one is the channel EQ, you can actually kind of make it like a pull tech. This other one is actually a glue compressor, this is like a VCA, we will go the same thing. What we do, first, do the same thing that we did, bring down the attack a little bit down, and depending on the release, what you feel like, go from there. As you can see, this, do this, this does the same thing, more or less. Here we go. Now, the difference here is the, how the channel EQ works. Actually, it boosts like this, and then you have to do a manual cut. So you will bring this down, you see that we are attenuating, and then you have to bring this down, the place where you want to have. So let's say something like this is quite similar to the pull tech, but you have to play with this around yourself to get that sweet spot. Actually, this gives you more options because now you are free to move it around, and pull tech has only four options, so it's plus and minus, right, at the same time. So let's play around. some air there as well. Let's do an AB again. Here we go. The same techniques, same application by only using the Ableton's own plugins, I would say. The other thing that I should mention here is you see that the loudness is actually higher while the dynamic range is lower. So this will be much easier to master because again, this version, there is not much difference here. So I immediately have minus 5 dB headroom. So I can just boost this E limiter. Right, like 5.8 dB without clipping anything, so the clean master. But if you try to do that with the same thing, you see we are already clipping around the 4 dB. So I created myself a more headroom, making my track easier to master and easier to make it louder, right? Especially if you want to go for that louder track. So what I will do, I will share this project down below on my Patreon, so you can go there and download it and play around yourself and see those different aspects. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. And I will catch you next one. Goodbye.